Today is April 28, 2005, and this is an interview with Mike Vargo at his home at 124 Kirby Lane, Portage, PA. Mr. Vargo is 80 years old, having been born on September 6, 1924. Our names are Maria Wax Munsky and Corey Zaytuk, and we will be interviewers. Mr. Vargo, could you please state for us what war and branch of the military you served in, what your rank was, where you served, and your length of service? It's on the paper. <laughs> I know you're supposed to make you say it, though. Uh, uh, well, uh, I was in the, the 45th Division, 180th Infantry uh, Regiment, uh, Company M, uh, uh, a heavy machine gunner. And uh, and I was uh, a squad leader, a sergeant uh, for deploying on the squad, and, and uh, probably had uh, like three or four men under me, and uh, and I served from uh, I went in the army May nineteenth, nineteen forty three, uh, to Indian Town Gap, and then I went to. Uh, Fort McClellan, Alabama, and I went uh, 13 weeks of basic training, and then I came home on a seven-day furlough, and from that I went down to uh, uh, Fort Meade, Maryland, and I was there like, uh, mm, I'd say probably five weeks, and I'd come home every weekend, every weekend uh, for Saturday, and then Sunday I'd go back, uh, and I went to uh, Patrick Henry for uh, Patrick Henry for three days, then went on uh, um, went to Newport News, Virginia, and got on a boat, uh, a Liberty ship, uh, 21 days to go across the ocean, and then uh, landed in Oran, Africa, and then from there we went uh, to a replacement center. Uh, they called it Lime Mountain Camp. And we had training, we'd, we'd climb this mountain at night and during the day, field trips and that. And I was there from the day before Thanksgiving, 1943, to, to the day after Christmas of 43. And then I went on a boat, uh, went to Oran, got on a boat, went to Naples, Italy. And uh, from there I went to a placement center up uh, in, uh, the center of Italy and uh, joined the 45th Division, but I uh, didn't go into combat there. First combat, we go, we we went uh, down back down to Naples and uh, got on a ship and we made the invasion of Anzio, Anzio, Italy, and uh, we was on this beachhead from uh, from I'd say probably the last week in February of no January of 40. 44 till uh, till we hopped off May the 26th, May the 26th, 1944, and this was a beachhead that was uh, like uh, 15 miles wide, 10 miles deep. And we we lived in holes, and uh, for for what uh, February, March, April, May, June, May, uh, like four over four months we was in this. And uh, from there, uh, we we, uh, we camped outside of Rome for for a couple of days, and then we went on back on a ship, went down to Salerno, Italy, uh, and we went beach training from uh, probably the middle of July till uh, August 15th. August 15th, we got on a ship. Well, well, the 14th, we got on a ship. Uh, we made the invasion of southern France. We, we uh, and uh, from there we went up to, uh, through France. Uh, most of it was like uh, uh, we rode on top of tanks. We rode on top of tanks, and yeah, you you went out there early in the morning, like six six o'clock in the morning. You get on a tank, and you you uh, the tank we was in a calm, and uh, and. Uh, you, you, you went, you, uh, probably you went like uh, three or four miles or five miles, 
and then uh, Germans would have a anti-tank guns or something, and they'd they'd knock out the first couple of tanks or something, and uh, and would get off the tank and dig a hole, dig a hole, and finally they'd get uh, there was a firefight, and we'd get back up on a tank, and uh, and then we we'd go again till we till we met resistance again, and we'd get off the tank, and that we went, that was. I'd say probably from about, man, I'm trying to estimate the time. Uh, that was August. I, I mean, I don't know, but it was a couple of, it was quite a few months. And uh, then we, uh, we got up to northern France. Uh, and uh, and uh, we was in a rest area. We was in a rest area, and the captain come over and could come to me, and he says, "How much money you got?" And I says, uh, "So I looked at my wallet. I says, ninety dollars." He says, "You're going to Ro uh, uh, London on a furlough." So I went to London. I was gone 26 days. I, d I get on a, um, a first truck, and then a train, went to La Havre. Uh, from La Havre, went to Paris, spent a day in Paris, went back to La Havre. Got on, uh, went up to the English Channel, got on a ship, went over to, to England, uh, went to a camp. I went to Southampton for three days, crossed the East Channel, back to La Havre, Paris. Back. Um, when I got up to the outfit, we went up to a house there, and we, uh, they was going to cross the Rhine River at night. So we looked over there and we couldn't see, we looked at field glass and stuff, and we crossed uh, the Rhine River in a, in a, a motor boat, a motor on the back of the boat, and 2.30 uh, and in the morning, and it was bedlam. <laughs> I mean, they were shooting at us with ACAC ac guns and everything, but we made it across and, and went up. Uh, and then from there we went into Germany and uh, and uh, we went to uh, Bamberg, we took Bamberg and then um, we crossed the, the, the Danube River. Now the Danube River is in blue. It's brown as that cupboard there. And uh, yeah, we was uh, uh, the, we waiting alongside the river to, to get on the boat, and two German planes come over, and first time we ever saw jet airplanes, going, and so uh, the boat in uh, the crew in front of us got on a, in a boat, and he had paddles, he had paddled the way across, and it was real swift, and the boat in front of us uh, took off. They get halfway across the river, and they. They turned over. They uh, uh, the boat up capsized, uh, and then we got on the next boat. We got on the next boat, and we paddled away across, but we made it. And uh, that was very racking. That was really nerve wracking. Well, and then we went, and for three days we were house to house. House to house, you you, you went uh, you you was on this side of the street, and the guy in front of you would run across the machine gun bullets to the left, you know, and he'd come and run in the door, and, and then you you'd go. Uh, it was very uh, very it was really a um, tough battle, and uh, Stalag, that's a beer on the floor. We had a guard on the back door, and we never opened the door. But you could hit that. the Germans would be going up and down the street. And then the uh, second day, well, we were the center of the city, and uh, there was like a park in the middle of the city. And uh, we come up to the to the houses on the end, and looking across the, the you know the open ground. We couldn't cross it, but we had to cross it uh, uh, after the after uh, as soon as it got dark. And we're standing in line. 
and we're standing in line, you know, like uh, uh, t ten, 10 yards apart, you, the man in front of you, you know. And all of a sudden, I hear four mortars going off. Four mortars went off. It, you know, you could hear chunk, 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 chunk. And something told me to go over to this building. And I went over. It was when the, when the first when the first shell was about to land. He, he got his head blown. Uh, we doctored him up, uh, but uh, but that was funny. I mean, some guy. Uh, um, we took him down in the basement there, and uh, we we dressed his head, and he had. To, we we took uh, in France. We took a uh, ski on him. One one was about he had. The other one, he says, I can drink, I can drink uh, uh, half of a quart, uh, half of a bottle bef by the time I goes to the hospital. But I never saw him after that. Dixon was his name. And then from there, from Nuremberg, we went down to Munich, and uh, that that was uh, we we went, and I'm sitting. I'm in German, and somebody, it, it, we, we scream. Mm, I'd say probably half her outfit went through. We we stepped to the outfit, and we went into the, 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 the I'd say probably a, a week or two after we took Munich, and the Musa. And then we heard on the radio that the war ended, and there was a church here. We went in the church and said a couple of prayers, and then we went out and played ball. And I stayed in the army occupation for six to whenever the war ended, uh, till uh, I'd say probably it was, it was nice. I mean, you didn't have there wasn't no uh, no uh, what, what do you call it. There was no government, and uh, you could do whatever you want to. I mean, well, like probably the first month, uh, you didn't even have to get up for breakfast or nothing. You know, we a sergeant of the guard every three weeks. The, I the guard to sleep, and, and so it was a very um, very nice time after the war. We we had a good time and we was garden. The, 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 the probably about I, I'd say probably three thousand five thousand Germans down down on that hole you know down in that thing and we was up on a perimeter with our machine gun you know but uh, when when these prisoners would come, and uh, and we we was uh, we was burning it, we was burning it because it wasn't any good at that time. So uh, we, we, we we was burning it, and I I put uh, uh, fifty. Uh, uh, it was uh, you know like you, you have uh, one dollar bills, fifty, and they they ban it. Well, this was 20 marks, 20 marks was a dollar, and it was 50 of them, brand new, you know. I put them in my pocket, and uh, so I had them at, uh, so later on, why we, it became good, good money, and we were burning them. Seems to me like around five dollars I spent, we always had beer in a, ba in a pair of barracks, and uh, when we was in Nuremberg, I picked up a, uh, from Nuremberg till, uh, Till, uh, I'd say a month after the war, why I had him in my squad. I, 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 I knew Slovak then, Slovak, and he was Russian, so I could talk to him. And, and uh, finally, after about a month after the war, why a uh, decree come down that uh, you couldn't keep any prisoners or uh, anything, so he had to go. So I. I, I gave him that forty-five dollars out of my, uh, you know, German money. I says you'll need it more than I do, and so. And let's see uh, what else. Oh, we was right outside of Dachau one time. We was guard uh, guarding a prison there, and 
but the different things. And uh, um, I had uh, I had a jeep, a jeep. Uh, we used to go out and round up civilian prisoners. And I remember we went to this one house, and we wanted to know the, where this uh, certain man was. And uh, they told us he's out in the field, so we drove the jeep out in the field and picked him up and arrested him. <laughs> it was so. I mean, uh, I, I saw a lot of stuff. Uh, and one one thing, like uh, in, uh, in well, that uh, that one in Nuremberg, and then uh, another another time was uh, when we was on Angio, we was on Angio, and uh, let's see if I can find it. I can't. Uh, here's Angio. But, but uh, I mean, we, it was a beachhead, and right over here was a mus. Canal uh, uh, was was the 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 one point, and uh, uh, I remember uh, I'd say probably uh, about a week before we hopped off of Anzio, uh, where we was up in the front there for 16 days. Never saw we had a machine gun. Uh, it was a ditch. Mussolini Canal was about, I'd say, probably 12, 15 feet deep. That's how deep uh, you could walk around in there and jump the canal. And down here, about about 15 feet away, was uh, a hole we called the safe hole because it was dug in the in the in the bottom of the ditch. And uh, so one day we were getting shelled, and I happened to be up the machine gun, and uh, a big shell come in and hit that hit that hole within three men in it. And uh, so after the shelling, why uh, me, me and uh, I don't know how many of us was up there, uh, we went down and we tried to dig these guys out. And I remember pulling on a, we finally dug down to the blanket and I had a blonde haired, blonde haired young kid in my squad. And I'm pulling this blanket, and all of a sudden this scalp come on it, you know. So we quit digging. And that was it. We just left it, and, and we we got out of there about uh, probably five o'clock in the morning. Was when we we went from the front, we went back to the rear area, and uh, and uh, like uh, about a week before we hopped off of there, every. But like between five and six o'clock in the morning, when just getting daylight, every gun on the beachhead would fire, and it was just boom, 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 you know. And we was walking back, and we went back on the beach. We went back on the beach, and uh, in a rear area, and uh, you you had a you set up your machine gun uh, out to the ocean, uh, to the sea, Mediterranean Sea. Uh, in case the Germans wanted to come, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you, you you lived in a hole, and you you put your t half of the tent across to the top of it, and every night uh, that was a rest area, and every night the German airplane would come over, and you could hear them, you know, and up there, and all of a sudden you you look up through your tent, and uh, and uh, it was like daylight. Because they drop flares, and then you hear this German plane come down, and he'd he'd drop about uh, uh, probably 15, 20 bomb, little bombs, and personnel bombs, and then one, the last one was always a big one. That was a rest area, <laughs> so it was very. And let's see, come. Uh, that it, it was interesting going across the ocean, 21 days, uh, 90 ships in a convoy, nine miles an hour across the ocean. You, well, I could have walked that fast almost. Uh, but anyhow, uh, you're going across the Atlantic Ocean, and anywhere you looked, there were ships. And you went out across in a convoy, and and these these destroyers and destroyer escorts would come in between the ships, and they'd drop uh, personnel bomb uh, the depth charges, you know, 
but it was, a, and we was on this ship, the 500 soldiers on a Liberty ship, a make, all we did was stand in line to eat. Well, it wasn't made for a troop ship, and, uh, and every little wave, the ship went this way, sideways. Uh, it was very interesting, and, uh, but coming back, coming back from Marseille, France, on a troop ship, uh, 7,000 troops on a troop ship, uh, seven days. And uh, the last day, the last day before we landed, uh, why, uh, it was, uh, we hit choppy seas. And uh, a big boat, big boat, it didn't went sideways, it went front to back. And I'm standing up on the front of the boat. And the, the ship would come up, you could see the bottom of the ship, and and then when it reached its peak, uh, I'm hanging on to a thing, a tow line, what they put tow line on, and uh, and it would start down, and uh, you got the feeling if if you wasn't hanging on, you'd keep going up, but we'd go down, we'd go down, and the uh, the anchors would hit the water and send it over the ship, and I'd duck behind the railing, and. So I was having fun. <laughs> have to get off the front of the ship, it's too dangerous. So that was it. That was, he killed Joy. So that, that was very interesting. I, mean, I never got seasick. All, all the time I was on the ship, uh, like uh, the Salerno before we uh, hit southern France, we lived we practically lived on a ship. And every morning we'd go out uh, and hit the beach at. Uh, between Salerno and Naples, we'd go through a uh, farmer's uh, uh, watermelon and uh, cantaloupe patch. And <laughs> uh, I remember one time I jumped across the, uh, uh, a canal. Uh, they, they, down there they had, they had a lot of canals, you know, where take the water out to the sea. And uh, I remember I jumped across and I didn't make it and I went down in the water and got up. And, but, uh, and, and there's a ship, it was an LCI, and it would let you out uh, water up to there. W water up to there, and everything would get wet, and uh, you hit the beach, and, uh, and uh, in uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you was dry, because uh, it was hot. It was, this was July and August. But it was very interesting. And then when we hit the beach on southern France, was on one of them uh, barges where, you know, a big gate comes down and never even got my feet wet. The, the, the gate come down on, uh, on the sand, which is interesting. Okay. <laughs> you just answered most of our questions, but I think they're good. Did you volunteer or were you drafted? Drafted. You were drafted. Yes. Thing. I was 18 years old. Got got out of high school in uh, May of '42, and I were uh, finally in September. I became 18 years old, and uh, and I went in the mine. I worked in the mine till I went to the army in May, May the 19th. And I always remember May the 19th because that's my sister Pauline's birthday. <laughs> um, can you explain to us a little more the nature of your duties every day during the war? Well, uh, it was deployed. A lot of uh, hiking, uh, like I said, all the way up through France, we uh, rode on top of tanks, uh, but uh, you walked a lot. And I remember, um, like, uh, when we hopped off of Anzio, uh, going up towards Rome, and uh, I'm carrying a, a machine gun, which is a water-filled machine gun, which weighs about 45 pounds. I can't remember whether I had the machine gun or the tripod. The tripod weighs 51 pounds. I had one or the other. It seems to me like I had the machine gun. And, uh, and every time we'd come to a little rise, uh, this lieutenant would hand me his rifle and he'd pull me up, you know. And, uh, and so uh, later on, uh, I'd say quite later on that day, uh, I, I met him. Uh, he, he was, he was killed. The uh, shell came in. He was laying on the ground. That was odd. What do you remember about boot camp? 
boot camp uh, down in uh, Alabama. It was hot, hot. Uh, I was there from uh, probably uh, the latter part of May till uh, till s September. Thirteen weeks. Okay, June, July. But 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 from, I was there from uh, from uh, latter part of May till the uh, first part of September, and that was hot time. And I remember uh, uh, like uh, this. Uh, his name was Sunbury. He was from Hartford, Connecticut, I think. Never did a day of work in my life, in his life, but yeah, he was. Um, I'd say probably in his early thirties, and. Uh, uh, he was always next to me, Sunbury and Vargo, S U and V, and uh, and we're standing at attention, and all of a sudden he kills over. He, he fainted more times, and but uh, that was odd. But uh, it was hot uh, towards the end, like you know, I don't, I don't believe, you know, like even in September, the nights were. And then, and then from there went to Fort Meade, Maryland. And uh, okay, next question. All right. Could you briefly describe for us the military food? Did you ever eat spam or SOS? Uh, when I was in Alabama, they had hot dogs one time for supper, and uh, I got sick. I got sick on hot. Dogs. I, I never, I never had spam in the army. Uh, but uh, we had Vienna sausages and we had uh, hot dogs, but I never ate them. I'd always take the whatever, whatever other thing was. But like in combat, you ate, you either, you either ate, uh, uh, most of the time you ate K-rations, which was a box like a Cracker Jack box. And, uh, and in it was a, a, a little can about this big. Uh, it reminds you of a, uh, Copenhagen snuff can, okay, and it was a can of uh, uh, different things, like um, uh, and the different. Uh, it was, uh, but it was hydrated, and you 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 heated it over. Uh, we had these um, uh, little, little things that we used to light, and you'd you'd heat it, um, and then there was a. a pack of crackers, like, uh, seems to me like about four crackers, and then uh, a little box of, uh, of cigarettes, like uh, four cigarettes in a box. And, uh, and now later, the one, first part of the war, why, uh, in, can you picture, uh, you know, what whole wheat looks like brown and pressed? Pressed into a cracker. That's what that's what it was. Now later on in the war, they had soda crackers, which was a big improvement. And uh, and then they, they, sometimes they uh, uh, like the K rations had the latter part of the war. They'd have.